Hello everyone, it's Lottie from Cancer is a Lifestyle and welcome to another Sunday Ramble. <laughs> a lot's been going on this time and I am actually sitting in, right in front of my daughter's work so if you see people walking around back and forth, uh, it, that's why <laughs> they're going in to get their coffee. Uh, so I actually made a list because I have a lot to cover this time but uh, I had a busy week and it seems like this month is going to be quite a busy month. So anyway, let's get to it. Uh, last week, let's start with the middle of the week and all. I ended up getting a an email from my hospital. Uh, I go to UIC. Uh, I live here in Illinois and uh, on the outskirts of Chicago and one of the suburbs. I used to go to Rush. And um, if you're not familiar with Rush, it's quite a um, well-known hospital. Well, anyway, UIC sent me an email if I wanted to participate in a study. Now, um, I've done one before, um, several years ago when I was, um, when I would just finish my first treatment, I shouldn't say my first treatment, my first bout with cancer when I was in remission the original time. So this is like 207, 208. I think it was probably 208 because I was in remission. And I actually, at that time, if you were familiar with Rush Hospital uh, here in Chicago, they were building the top because it's a huge many stories high and at that time they did not have all those additional stories and they were building the top and they were going to do a whole floor uh, just for um, cancer patients and it was the cancer floor I don't know I've never seen it again because I, I my insurance changed that year and I never got to see it again and I was in remission that time for four and a half years so I never got to see the new wing or anything but they asked a lot of us cancer patients back and they asked us to bring someone with us usually uh, you know like your significant other I actually brought my chemo partner that I had and uh, we participated in a one-day study uh, where they took input from us uh, as to how we can improve our treatment our um, how to make it easier for us while we're in treatment, what would we like to see on, on the uh, floor itself or in the uh, chemo th or radiation therapy rooms, uh, things like that. And also they asked the perspective of our partner here, whoever we brought with us, because you know, we were the patient and you know, they are the family member. How can, it, how can we improve? How can, what can we do different? What we would like to see in the new floor? things like that that we had a nice meal there were all kinds of people there uh, from different all kinds of different cancers and uh, it was a nice time it was something um, it you know it, it, it was, oops, sorry guys uh, it was it was a nice study it was only a one day and it actually I treated it almost like an outing and uh, it was good to kind of talk about my cancer and things like that so this study actually and I'm going to read it to you what they are asking for and they are asking for any patient that actually goes to the hospital so they're going to pick you have to fill out an application and they're going to pick uh, so many candidates okay uh, that are interested in doing this study. So let me read to you what they exactly they want to do. They are doing a study. How does an enhanced behavioral lifestyle intervention program help people improve what they eat, how much they exercise, and how they feel? That is the whole study. Okay, so this tells me that it is about your. Um, your health it's about losing weight it's about uh, eating making healthy choices exercising uh, kind of like preventive medicines which is a nice and let me tell you when I first read this and then I came in the evening sorry guys because I turned it up full blast so you guys can hear my audio and uh, it was in the evening when I read this and I have the personality that, you know, I see these things and my hand wants to go up and yay, 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 I want to volunteer. I volunteer for everything, folks. I am one of those volunteer freaks. You know, I volunteer for everything. So it sounded very interesting. Besides that, um, I just did a video. I haven't posted it yet on my 
food diaries. Now, if you've seen those, you know that my gain has been about eating healthy. Choosing a better healthy lifestyle. So you're, you know, you would think that, you know, hey, this is what I'm aiming for. This is what they're doing. Why don't I join this study? Well, I went to bed and the next morning I, I woke up. I had time to think about it. And I'm going to uh, kind of decline and I'm not going to do this. And I'm going to tell you why. I have three reasons why I'm not going to do this study. Now, I could change it. I still have till September 15th. Uh, to actually put in my application and all but um, I'm going to tell you my concerns one and this is a big one is that just forget it's there okay pretend it's not there you don't hear that and um, the uh, number one thing is that I'm really concerned that it's going to be time consuming I have to do so many sessions uh, each time I go in Each time I go in, uh, I have to, uh, it's going to be like a two-hour session. I have to do MRIs for another thing. So I might have to take off work. I might have to, um, do I have time allotted for this is what I'm saying. There's going to be fo phone sessions from coaches. I have to um, come in and uh, spend the day. Uh, I think there's at least one or two day times that I have to come in and spend like a discussion group. Um, um, I have to come in regularly for MRI and that's a two-hour thing itself so there's a lot of involvement and um, so I'm not sure if I have the time to do that I would have to take off work do I want to do that this is a huge issue for me and also UIC is pretty congested traffic wise down there so do I want to have all this hassle I really don't the second thing that my other concern was because I have to take MRIs and besides they have to, you know, they're talking to me about my lifestyle. Um, you know, I, I imagine they're going to uh, kind of make a program for me, uh, you know, probably a food or probably exercising or, and the fact that really caught me here, and I know I'm rambling, but this is the ramble. They want to know my behavioral, you know, how does an enhanced behavioral lifestyle intervention? So that tells me that they might be giving me something, uh, a stimulant, or maybe I'm asked to, I don't know, drink things. I'm not sure. I didn't like that idea either. I have been uh, free of medication for 12 years. I have, I don't like the idea of uh, signing up to Put things in my body that I don't know that it's a study a study is is just questionable so I didn't like that I, I've never had an MRI I don't think I would have a problem with that but they're gonna be studying my brain waves so you know I don't know I doubt very much that it's just going to be a verbal enhancing that they're going to do right that they're going to intervene that they're just going to uh, you know what I mean like I, I just don't know I don't like that idea. And the third reason uh, that I'm concerned about is like I said, you know, it says you will get so many phone sessions, coachings, you will get so many, so many, um, you know, you will meet with a coach, you will get a program. And you know, the last time I had something like that with my doctor, and that was my GP, I did not have a good experience where I actually had to write down and what I ate and what I you know and uh, you know what she did not believe anything that I, I said she believed that the reason that I was heavy had to be because I am eating donuts all day long and that is at her words and I thought to myself that you know for someone and I think this is a big problem when you're trying to eat healthy or try to do anything and people uh, don't encourage you, they discourage you. You're already feeling bad as it is for making these unhealthy choices. And then when somebody is uh, accusing you of maybe not being as, um, I don't know, you're not truthful, you're lying. You're, you know what, I wanna be encouraged and not discouraged. So um, I don't know. Right now, you probably think I'm being silly but I'm really having reservations about this study. And so right now it's a no until further notice. Anyway, 
I have a CT scan planned for this Thursday. I have not had one in about a year. Now, I have a new insurance carrier. I've done this, I've done a vlog on this, so if you follow, then I'm repeating myself, then I am sorry. Um, this is mostly for people who not watched that video. But uh, my last, I was supposed to have one every six months. My last one was in January. Uh, they never approved it. And I am saying they never approved it because it's been pan pending. So how long is it going to pend? For how many days? How many months? Uh, so it was not approved. So um, this time around, my doctor um, uh, was very descriptive and elaborated on my cancer. I have a, I have a recurrent cancer. So uh, she was very descriptive, very elaborated a lot on why I needed this um, done. Last week, I get a uh, voice message from my insurance, something I have never had in, before. And they're asking me, and then this is what they said on, my, on the voice message that um, they need to talk to me uh, about a request that my doctor has placed. Well, what else could have my doctor have placed except the CT scan that I have to do on Thursday? So I'm questioning what, you know, they have questions about it. If they have questions about it, they should talk to my doctor, not to me. What do I know about the medical terms or anything? I feel like this is a trap almost like they want, why would they? Why would they want to talk to me about a request that my doctor made? For heaven's sakes, that has never happened. I find that that is very unprofessional. Uh, and I feel like it's almost a trick to ask me how I'm feeling, what I'm feeling. And then they can say, well, you know, she feels fine. Uh, and that's not, no, you, my doctor is representing me. If they need to talk to me, if they have questions about that, they need to call my doctor. So again, I, you probably um, this might come back to haunt me, but I am not calling them back. I don't feel that this has never happened to me. So I'm uh, I'm beginning to think that maybe I'm not going to get this CT scan again, and it's already been a year. So I don't know. We're gonna see. I'll let you guys know next Sunday how that goes. Which is another thing is that my um, my anxiety I have noticed this month is so high i am so crabby i am irritable and i am really anxious and uh, i mean like nervous i bet you my blood pressure will be up and when i take it um and i thought to myself why in the world am i feeling like that it's not like i have issues if my cancer came back i've dealt with uh you know with having cancer years ago i've accepted you know this is my diagnosis this is my life this is my life. So why am I feeling like this? And I think I figure it out. The anxiety that I'm getting from um, just the thought that I have to go and, you know, what is the outcome going to be and uh, the results. It's not that I might have cancer it, it has come back. It's that I have to deal with my long-term and short-term disability carriers. Now, FMLA is going to be approved. If I need it because that is the law but the long-term and short-term disability that my company offers and the company that they have that the carrier that handles it um, make your life miserable and I'm sorry I am really negative I guess I'm saying a lot of things this time that maybe will offend people and but I don't really care because I've lived it and their main job is not you even though you're paying for like the long-term disability that is something that i am paying for in my benefits every paycheck okay their whole job is to make sure that you come back to work as soon as possible even if you're not ready uh, medically so they hound you every week the whole time that i am off on a benefit that is totally entitled to me that i pay for and they make it as difficult as possible irritate me where I can't even do recovery. I can't focus on just the cancer and just relax and I'm like, so the very thought, and I have tried different ways 
I just, I just hate that part. And I think it's horrible that they do that. I have cancer. I know there are people that um, abuse the system all the time. But Lord sakes, I have cancer. Do you think I'm lying about that? I mean, I just, I don't know. Just the very thought that I may have to go back uh, into treatment and have to deal with these people, it really gets me just my anxiety, um, you know, top level. But you know what? It's Sunday. I'm here to see my daughter, have some coffee, and I'm just going to forget it. Anyway, on to another thing because this ramble is really turning into a ramble. Anyway, my car. So the other thing I'm going to do is, if you remember, I had a few things that I needed. I like to maintain my car regularly. So if I go in and they tell me, hey, you need to, you know, this is falling apart or that needs to be fixed, I go and I fix it. Because I have broken down many times in my life on the side of the road and I do not ever want to break down again. So I have a better car now. My car is, uh, what, nine years old. I want to maintain it. I know last time people were thinking, uh, someone, um, some people may think that, you know, hey, you know, you might be taken in and they want to spend money. Look, I go to the same place all the time. If, uh, if they want me as a customer, they take care of my car for me. So last time I took care of my front strut shocks, which is quite a big job. It was not cheap, but I need my back strut shocks done which is half the amount and the other thing I need to get done is my heater slash heat slash uh, air conditioning relay base needs to be replaced it's not the fuse okay it's the base itself when you put the fuse in it doesn't stick it doesn't stay you have to hold it with your hand for it to work so that has to be changed so this is another thing that I want done I spent summer folks without any air conditioning in here thank goodness it was not super hot um, so I need to get my car in I would love to get my car in this upcoming weekend sometime this week I need to go get a quote uh, to see how much I need boy this is gonna turn out to be a great day and I get that done. So that's upcoming this week. I also have this month three birthdays. Next week I have a birthday party that I'm going to. Um, actually next weekend is really three birthdays all in one, but only one party. One of them happens to be my grandson is having a golden birthday. He is will be turning 17, you guys. 17. This year I have two grandchildren, one in eighth grade, and one going into his senior year. They both will be graduating this school year. Oh, just, wow, he just got his license. And uh, so yeah, happy birthday to my Timothy coming up. And my other birthday boy happens to be my godson, my brother's uh, son, oldest, he's 18. Happy birthday, Logan. And then my little six-year-old Kai. <laughs> my little baby boy he is my niece's son he is six years old a little old man that's what we love to call him and my little old man uh i just love him to bits i love you know i laugh i have laugh about this all the time because his parents are true vegans and this little boy is the junk food junkie of the year and i always laugh is how these two vegans <laughs> ended up with the junk food junkie this kid eats three things pizza chicken tenders and fries that is it i don't know how that happened with these two vegans i don't know but uh, uh that's where i'm going next weekend and i i will tell you i've noticed that all our boys in our family well you know grown teenagers and youngsters young ones their their birthdays Come in groups so like august we got like three birthdays then november i think we got like five and uh, the girls are all spread out but the boys they come in clusters so uh let's see what else do i have to talk about i think that's it oh yeah one more thing you guys and then i'll let you guys go and enjoy your sunday this month august i think it was the 16th also wow next weekend too is my six-year anniversary for my crocheting ministry 
and um, six years you guys since I started the ministry uh, if you go on our page I am going to be doing a whole bunch of like tributes to all the people that have been uh, in our, my group and uh, there's gonna be a lot of changes coming to the page a lot of changes coming to the ministry itself but this month I am I want to be celebrating and kind of paying a tribute to everybody that has been there um, that has participated in um, either making items or donating yarn or they just made deliveries so that's it you guys I will let you go enjoy your Sunday and um, I'll let you know how all of this drama and saga with my CT scan turns out next week and otherwise I hope you have a wonderful Sunday bye bye everybody bye bye